Hey everybody, Pat Kelly here of Mad River Outfitters and uh, welcome to another fly tying tutorial. Today we are tying Larry Dahlberg's Flash Dancer. Today we are tying Larry Dahlberg's Flash Dancer. Um, it's an old one, but a really good one. And it's a, uh, it's a classic that I think everybody should have in their box. And it's super fun to tie. Uh, so thanks for being here. Before we get started, I just want to uh, let everybody know there is a full step-by-step and -step blog that, uh, that I wrote about this fly. So be sure to head over to the blog, check that out. Um, also be sure to like and subscribe. And if you like content like this, let, uh, let us know, leave a comment. And uh, if you have any ideas of what you want to see or things you'd like to see, be sure to let us know in the comments below. So, all right, let's get started. We're going to start with a, uh, there's actually two different hooks you can use in the blog. Uh, I use the Partridge Predator Universal, uh, excuse me, Partridge Universal Predator um, number four. That's kind of a light wire hook option. Um, another one that I really like is the A-Rex Trout Predator. The same size equivalent is a two. So the, the size two A-Rex Trout Predator is actually the same as the Partridge number four. Really the only difference between the two hooks is this hook is about twice the uh, wire diameter. So it's quite a bit heavier, a little bit stouter. Uh, I actually prefer it in most situations, but uh, today you'll be seeing me tie it on this, but on the blog you'll see it with that partridge hook. So it's just something I wanted to kind of run through really quick before we got started. So go ahead, thread. You can use uh, either a gel spun. I prefer to use a Vivas Power thread here. Uh, the, the gel spun thread seems to um, cut through the hair a little bit more so. Uh, we're not using a lot of hair uh, at the front of this fly, so the gel spun tends to slice through it if you're not careful. The, the Vivas Power Thread just gives me a little bit more control, so I tend to use that more than anything else. So um, what I like to do is I'll start my thread about maybe a third of the way back from the eye. That's my starting point in my thread. And then from there, I'll just do touching wraps, laying a foundation of thread all the way back to just into the bend. Um, the reason why I've less, left this little bit of hook exposed is because that is where I need to begin my deer hair head. So it just kind of gives me a visual reference of, you know, hey, I need to get everything tied in with the exception of the head before that mark. I know there's no going beyond that. It just kind of gives me a visual cue. So as I'm assembling and putting the fly together, I just kind of know exactly where my stopping point needs to be so that I don't run out of room. So that's kind of the idea behind that. But you do want to have a nice foundation of thread on your shank before you get started. So uh, the tail is uh, is just nothing simple, just a white piece of, uh, of strong marabou. So go ahead and try to find a full piece if you can. Um, I brought this toothbrush along to just kind of show you uh, a couple different tricks really quick with your marabou. So not not every piece is going to be, you know, a nice full picture perfect piece of marabou. You can see that one's kind of matted and stuck together. One thing you can do is if once you kind of strip all the junk off, take a toothbrush and just lay the feather down on the table. And if you just run the toothbrush over the fibers, it'll actually take all of that, all of the, uh, the individual fibers and separate them. And then you end up with this really nice full marabou plume. So just <clears throat> good little way to uh, to use more of the material on the bag and, and waste a lot less. So only need one plume here. Just wet it a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to control. Um, as far as length goes, I'm shooting for about one and a half times the length of the hook shank. So kind of just hold it up there, give yourself a little reference, find that one and a half mark, and go ahead and lock it in. Um, but, Starting point is kind of right in between the hook point and the barb of the hook. So I'll go ahead and lock that in with a pinch wrap. And then what I like to do is I'll actually walk the thread all the way back to where you're going just into the bend of the hook. All right. And the reason for that is if you tie that marabou really far back on the hook like this, it's a lot less likely that this marabou is going to foul and get wrapped around the hook when you're casting and fishing. So, you know, if you just locked it in here and kind of left it off the back, it tends to 
you know, get wrapped up around the bend, causing it to foul, and it just won't run right. So if you just tie your tail in just a little farther back and just barely down into the bend, it'll foul almost never. So just a little tip there. Uh, you can do that on really any fly that uses a marabou tail. Uh, that's a, a good, good thing to practice. So we're just going to take this, cover this all the way up. We're going to go almost all the way to where our thread stops. We're going to maybe leave about an eye length of room for our wing. So bring that all the way forward. We're then going to bring our thread back to where the, uh, the marabou is there. And now we're going to tie in our body. You can use several different things. You can use uh, a sparkle braid. You can wrap like a tinsel if you want. Um, I'm a really big fan of this uh, smaller chenille. It just adds a little bit more body uh, to the fly than, than tinsel does. And I just like the look of it. But whatever you have, you know, would certainly work. So go ahead and lock that in. Um, show you. One thing I do like is I'll expose the core of that chenille. If you can see that. And that just gives you a little bit cleaner tie-in point. So if you strip away some of those fibers, it just makes it a lot easier to lock in uh, the core there. And it gives you a nice clean tie-in point. And then you don't have this big, giant bump of material that you have to navigate and work around. So after you get that locked in, just kind of bring your thread forward and up and out of the way. I like to lay down just a little bit of, uh, of Z-Met on my thread there. just gives that chenille something to bind to. And increases the overall durability of the fly. So go ahead and start wrapping that forward. I'll make about one and a half wraps. And then before I go any further, I'll take and just kind of pull tight on it. And that just ensures that there's no slack um, or uh, in that chenille whatsoever. It's, it's bonded as tight to the hook as you can possibly get it. And it just little things you can do to increase the overall durability of the fly. So we'll bring that forward get to right about there and we'll tie that off a couple wraps behind a couple wraps in front all right that looks pretty good now we're going to lay in our wing I'm not entirely sure but as I remember it Larry um, I think in the first rendition of this fly doesn't have any support for the wing it's just a flash of a wing um, <clears throat> And I've just kind of over the years evolved and got to the point where I really like using just a small clump of bucktail right here on the fly. Uh, and that just gives a little more spring to the fly. Um, it helps support that flashaboo a little bit. So when you're fishing it, you know, it kind of keeps the flashaboo in place and, and prevents it from getting crazy and, and spinning around the hook. Um, it also kind of acts as like a stabilizer. So it keeps that fly upright. And, and tracking straight in the water so that it doesn't twist and turn. So it kind of acts as a keel almost because it's adding a lot of buoyancy above the hook. So you don't need a whole lot, just a really, really small little clump. So I get it cleaned out, I'll try to show you just for reference. It's really not, not much at all. It's very, very little. And then as far as length goes on this, we want it to extend to about the length of our marabou tail. You know, if you're about right in line with that, that's plenty fine. Our flashaboo that's going to go in on top of this is actually going to extend uh, just a little bit beyond the bucktail, a little beyond the marabou. So I, I try to line up the, uh, the marabou tail in this to be about the same. So get that kind of right where you want it. Go ahead and cut it flush. Uh, one thing I do like to do is not really necessary, but again, I think it adds durability to the fly is I'll just put a small little drop of z right on top of my hook there. And it just uh, helps the bucktail and it prevents it from moving around. You also want to try to keep this bucktail right on top of the hook shank. You don't want it to twist or roll or get underneath it at all. So a little trick that you can do to keep the bucktail up there is once you make a couple of loose wraps, pull upward like this on your fly tying thread and by creating that upward pressure on the thread it keeps all of that hair on the upper half of the hook shank it prevents it from working down around so if you look at the bottom of this uh, 
of the fly there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but all of your bucktail is on the upper half of the hook shank. So go ahead and kind of get that locked in. Looks pretty good. Now we're going to grab our flashaboo. I'm using the uh, the black lateral scale. Kind of has a black olive, kind of a little bit of a peacock look to it. Just a little bit darker than the rest of the fly. And adds a little contrast. The other thing that I really love to put into is, I mean, any fly I can put it in, I, I use it. This stuff is it's called Senyo's Predator Wrap, and it's modeled. It's got a little bit of UV to it. Um, it just adds a really nice shading and color to the fly. So um, I find myself trying to uh, work this into just about any fly that I tie anymore. So what I'll do is I'll fold this flashaboo in half and go ahead and cut it. And then what I'll do is I'll take this barred predator wrap and it kind of comes with a little core or uh, it's kind of sealed on the side. You want to go ahead and cut that away and then I'll kind of align those two together and then just do your best to kind of blend them together. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'll just kind of twist them a little bit and then I'll take my, my comb and run it through the fibers and it just kind of brings them all together a little bit. All right, once you've done that, I like to kind of cut that flush. And then what I'll do is I'll actually turn it around. So we're going to vert, reverse tie this material in. And it gives you a little bit cleaner tie-in point. It also adds to the, uh, the overall durability of the fly. So if you just tied it in straight off the back, it would be very easy to pull those flashaboo fibers out. So by reverse tying it, it's just kind of locking it in twice and makes it very, very difficult for a, a fish or just anything for that matter to pull that flashaboo out. So I'll fold that back. You know, you can take your thumb or your thumbnail and kind of push it into the fly a little bit and help spread it around. You still, generally speaking, you want to try to do your best to keep it on top of the fly there. So once that's locked in, I will kind of just get a hold of the fibers and come just a little bit beyond your marabou tail and just give it a cut. If you want to take the time and kind of feather it and make sure your flash of boost tapered and all that you can uh, in this case I don't really feel it makes a difference so I don't worry about it um, but that looks pretty good that's tied in now before we jump over to uh, our hair I'll take my z-mint and just put a little dollop right on the uh, those thread wraps just kind of locking that in place now one thing you can do totally unnecessary but I think it adds uh, just a little little flair a little style makes the fly look cool is if you have any uh, like little grizzly hackle laying around, you can take that and just tie it in along the side and it kind of just gives your fly a uh, kind of a lateral line. So I'm just gonna lock in that on that side. Do the same thing over here. Yeah. Now that fly will absolutely catch more fish. All right, a little more glue. Now we will advance our thread in front of that little bump there, and that will kind of act as a wall for our first stack of, uh, of deer hair so that it doesn't go any farther back than that. So come in. Um, <clears throat> as far as color of hair, you can use whatever your color you want. I tend to lean more towards either like a natural or a gray. Um, you know, you can also use chartreuse if you want something a little bit brighter but uh, you know whatever you think looks good the the natural and the gray i think look the best i'm a little partial to that so we'll kind of take a pretty decent little clump cut that away from the hide and before we stack it i like to kind of just take my thumb and forefinger and just kind of pinch and spin it a little bit it'll kind of open those fibers up and that allows your comb to uh, to get in there and pull all of that under fur and fluff out all of that stuff there you don't want in there that'll make it a lot harder to uh, to bind your material to the hook so once you get that out nice and clean go ahead and put it in your stacker it just lines up all your tips for you
And then what I'll do is I'll try to find the point where I can kind of trim this. I want it to be flush. But try to keep as much of that length as you can just because it'll be a lot easier to handle and, and spin around your hook. So now what we're going to do before we lock this in, kind of switch hands, get your... Uh, get your hair in your in your bobbin hand and just kind of hold the tips up to the uh, up to the, the fly there and kind of what I like to do is or you want to spin so that you know the the distance from your your tie-in point to the tips is about the length of the hook okay and you can see that's right about the same length as the hook shank is long um, and overall that's about a third of the length of the overall fly pattern so those are kind of two references that you can use to get your you know the length right on your hair so get that kind of situated and where you want it um, i'll usually try to cord my thread up here just makes it a little bit finer and smaller in diameter a little stronger and then i'll kind of make one loose wrap start to sink that thread into the hair a little bit do another one hair starts to flare and then i'll take that third wrap and just chase the uh, the hair all the way around the hook and then if you pull nice and tight that hair should have made one full revolution and it shouldn't be going anywhere you can pull on this and see that that hair's pretty well locked in so what i'll do before i advance my thread forward i will take a push tool empty pen casing whatever you have laying around and just kind of get in there and what i'm going to do is try to smash that hair up against that little bump that we had there. And we're just freeing up a little bit of space on this hook because we got to get one more spin in there. It doesn't have to be a lot of hair, but I do want to get two spins. This first one kind of acts as part of the head, but a lot of it is kind of the creation of the collar uh, that you see, or that you will see once we trim it. So go ahead and push that back. And then what you're going to do is kind of work your, your thread through your hair Kind of bring it out front. You can see we maybe have about two eye widths left. Not too bad. Like I said, we're not we don't need a lot of hair in here. Um, you know, we're not making this fly so that it floats. Uh, we're just trying to make a kind of a exaggerated muddler style head so it, it'll swim and kick side to side. Now the other variation of this, you can certainly tie it with a Dahlberg head. If you want to do that kind of more pointed nose, use belly hair instead of body hair, you can get a fly that's a lot more buoyant and will sit up on the surface and actually dive down and then rise back up. That's just another variation. So everything exactly would be, everything would be exactly the same, excuse me. Um, but the only thing you'd be changing is that head style. So you can go from kind of a swim fly to kind of a dive and rise style fly. So. It's kind of something fun that you can play around with. All right, kind of same as before. Now here, since this is all gonna get trimmed away, we don't need to stack this whatsoever. So just get in there with your comb and just pull all that under fur out. And then I like to just kind of trim the tips out of the, off the back end, just to kind of tidy everything up a little bit. And then just kind of Get this hair laid down right in front of the previous stack. Same deal, one, two, three, and around. And then one more through. And you can see you should be able to pull on that thread nice and tight and that hair not move. Also, before you cut or trim anything, you can take a second and just kind of look down the, uh, the barrel of the fly, so to speak, and just make sure that everything looks good and evenly distributed. If you see that you have a lot more hair on one side or the other, now's the time to fix it. Um, if you don't fix it now, you'll see it when you trim the fly. So just take the time. If you don't like it, back your thread off and just do it again. No big deal. So that should bring us up to right behind the eye, which it did. Kind of push this hair back and out of the way. Give ourselves a little bit of room to tie off here. So I'm just going to kind of work and walk my thread up through the hair and just work on getting it out in front there. There we go. Now we're just going to make just a couple, two, three wraps, get everything nice and tight, and then get in there and either half hitch or whip finish it. There we go. 
go. Now I will add a little bit of, uh, of cement to that, but I'm gonna trim the fly first. So make sure uh, all of your hair is kind of pulled out. Looks pretty good. Now you're gonna take uh, your flat, flexible razor. And the first cut that I like to make is the bottom. Kind of just sets the tone for the rest of the head. Um, nothing really, really fancy here. We're just going to take a nice clean draw across the bottom, and we're just going for a, a perfectly flat level base. Don't need to do any shaping or anything here. So make sure your, your hook is uh, relatively straight, and it helps to stabilize your hand when you're, when you're making these cuts. That way you're not wobbling back and forth. So I like to just kind of anchor my hand on the fly tying vise, and then I'll set my, my cutting hand on my hand just like this. And you can see now I'm nice and steady and stable. And I'll, what I'll do, rather than kind of sawing back and forth, I will, uh, I'll take the blade and I'll kind of push through the hair and then just draw the blade back just like that. And just in one little pull, I've gotten most of the hair cut away there. And then after that, it's just kind of small little strokes just tidying things up. So we'll get it most of the way there with the razor blade. And then uh, when it's all said and done too, we'll, we'll even come in with the scissors and kind of fine tune it. So that looks pretty good there. Happy with that. And because we're not making a popper, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just, just trying to do, a, like I said, a, a more or less an enlarged or a slightly bigger muddler style head. Nothing, nothing fancy. So if it's not perfect, it's not a big deal. It'll fish just fine. All right. Now for this same thing, we want to st stabilize our hand. So I'll kind of anchor my, my left hand on the vise here. And there's the benefit to the, uh, the flexible razor blade. You're going to kind of take it and kind of bend it into a little arc like that. Excuse me. And, uh, you're going to, push the razor blade right through the uh, through the head here, and that's gonna give us our muddler shape. So I kinda like to start low, and then I'll kinda work up, and then I'll come back with the razor blade, clear some of that hair out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. And just kinda little by little, just kinda work your way backwards, taking just a little bit of hair at a time. really no right or wrong head shape here just kind of work at it until you get to a point where you're happy with the way that it looks uh, once you think you're most of the way there I'll take the fly out of the vise and then I'll grab my scissors and just kind of make some little cuts along the side just clean things up just a little bit there you go Kind of come in here, and I'm just kind of pushing this Z-Met brush just into my thread head and just trying to add a little bit of glue just to make sure that that doesn't come apart. Gives me a little, uh, little extra protection there. <laughs> Looks pretty good. All right, everybody, that is Larry Dahlberg's Flash Dancer Fly. Uh, it's a great walk and wade pattern, great for smaller water, great in the low water of summer. Um, I generally am fishing this on a six weight, so pretty light setup. You can run it on a floating line. You can also run it on a short intermediate sink tip of some kind if you like, but just a really fun fly to fish. It's easy to throw, um, and I think you guys will really enjoy tying it and fishing it. So thanks for tuning in to another fly tying tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe, and if you like what you see, leave a comment below. And uh, don't forget, there's a full step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial and a little fun, fun facts over on our blog, so be sure to check that out as well. Thanks for watching. And check out these videos. And be sure to check out all these videos right over here. I think you'll really like those.